Minasan, konnichiwa. Would you like to learn some useful vocabulary connected to tea in English? Welcome to Jen's Jugyo. My name is Jen and today I'm going to teach you useful vocabulary connected to tea. First, we're going to talk about how to make a cup of tea. Then, I'm going to teach you about the six different types of tea that you can find. Before you make a cup of tea, there are a few things that you need to make sure you have. The first thing is tea. Tea can come in two different ways. A tea bag is the easiest way to make a cup of tea. You can just take the tea bag out, throw it in a teacup, and add some hot water. The other type of tea that you can get is loose leaf tea. Loose leaf tea will come in a container or in a bag. When you're making loose leaf tea, you need to use a reusable tea strainer or a disposable tea bag, or when you are making a pot of tea, inside the pot of tea, there will be something that looks like this. It is the filter, some people say strainer or mesh. So then you stick the loose leaf tea in here, then you stick this piece into the teapot. A teapot is a very important item for making tea. On your teapot, there are three vocabulary words I want to teach you. This is the lid, the lid. This part here is called the spout, the spout of the teapot. And this part here is called the handle. To enjoy drinking your tea, you also need a tea cup. These smaller, cute-sized cups are called tea cups because they're perfect for tea. Bigger cups, like this one here, is called a mug. Of course, you can also have a mug of tea, but many people enjoy drinking their tea with tea cups. When you're drinking tea from a teacup, it will also come with a small plate. This small plate that goes under your teacup is called a saucer, a saucer. So a cup and saucer are also things that you need for enjoying your tea. After you've gathered everything you need to make the tea, you can put the tea bag into the teapot, or you can put the strainer with the tea leaves into the teapot. The next thing you need to do is boil water. Many people have something like this called a kettle that they will use for boiling water. But if you are like me and don't have a kettle, you can just put some hot water in a pot on the stove and boil the water. This verb is boil. After you've boiled the water, the next thing you need to do is pour it into the teapot. Now that I've poured the hot water into the teapot, I need to put the lid on the teapot and wait. Usually you should wait for about three to five minutes depending on the type of tea. While you are waiting, the verb that you can use is steeping. I am steeping a pot of tea. What this means is that you're giving the tea leaves time to be absorbed into the water so that the water becomes flavored like the tea leaves that you have put into the teapot. This is the most common way that we usually make tea in Canada. However, there is a specific type of tea called matcha, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Instead of brewing the tea leaves, there is a special way of making matcha tea. The traditional way of making matcha tea is take the matcha powder. The tea leaves have been ground up so fine that they are actually a type of powder. So the first verb is scoop, scoop some matcha powder and then put it into this. This is called a tea bowl, a tea bowl. It's different from a tea cup because it does not have any handles. Okay? So scoop the matcha powder, put it into the tea bowl. This is a traditional matcha whisk, which is designed specially for making 
matcha tea. So you're going to use the same verb, pour the hot water into the bowl. This verb is pour. Then the last step for making matcha is to whisk the matcha powder. Now I am whisking the matcha. The next step to enjoying your tea is to drink your tea. Let's drink the matcha. Once your tea has finished brewing in your teapot, then you, again you will use the verb pour. So you're going to pour the tea from the teapot into your tea cup. This verb is pour. In addition to drink, another verb we can use with tea is sip, to sip your tea. So sip means to just drink a small amount. I am sipping this tea. Many people drink tea all the time. Every single day, I personally will have a cup or two or three or more of tea every single day. But did you know you can also have special tea parties in Canada called afternoon tea or high tea? Afternoon tea or high tea is usually served around 3 p.m., 4 p.m and consists of not just delicious tea, but also of a selection of food. Traditionally, it is served on a three-tiered tray. The bottom tray or plate will have savouries, things like miniature sandwiches. The second tier or the second plate will have scones or scones. Depending on who you talk to, the word can be pronounced differently. You will break apart in half and then you can add cream and jam. Scones are super delicious. The third tier has my personal favorite. It's a variety of very small, tiny cakes and other sweets. Having tea with these three-tiered variety of desserts to eat, including the cake and the scones, is a traditional way of enjoying afternoon tea. Now, I want to tell you about the six different types or varieties of teas that you can find and drink and enjoy. So I have prepared a small sample on this plate of each type of tea that you could find. Number one is probably the most common tea that is drunk in England and probably Canada as well. It is black tea. So the tea leaves themselves are actually black and when you brew or steep this type of tea it will be a much darker black brown color. The most common types of black tea are orange pico, English breakfast and earl grey. I myself personally enjoy earl grey black tea the best because it has the most pleasant aroma. Aroma means smell. Okay? So to me, Earl Grey has the nicest smell. Black tea also has a large amount of caffeine. Caffeine is a type of chemical that's in the tea plant that's growing that when people drink it, they feel stimulated. They feel like they get some energy. Most people drink coffee to get caffeine, but there's also caffeine in black tea. The second type of tea I want to talk to you about also has caffeine. It is green tea. This type of tea was originally from China, but was imported to other countries as well, especially Japan. Matcha is one of the most expensive types of green tea. The tea leaves are grown in the shade and are picked specially by hand and then ground into fine, fine powder. Some of the best matcha in the world comes from Uji, Japan. The third type of tea you can find is oolong tea. Oolong tea, the tea leaves themselves are a cross between green and black. The best type of oolong tea comes from the Fujian area in China. The fourth type of tea I want to talk to you about is white tea. When you look at white tea, the tea leaves themselves are not actually white, but it's called white tea because it has lower caffeine and the tea leaves themselves are picked when they're still buds. Right? So before the leaves open up and grow into big leaves, there's still tiny little buds. And that's what's picked to make white tea. The fifth type of tea is herbal tea. 
Herbal teas are different from the other types of tea because they're not made from leaves. Herbal teas can be made from flowers, berries, nuts, and other things like that, which are also steeped the same way you would steep and brew any of these other teas. My favorite type of herbal tea is chamomile tea, and it's made from chamomile flowers. Herbal teas are great because they have zero caffeine, so they're a great tea to drink before going to bed at night. And the final type of tea is rooibos tea. Rooibos tea comes from a different type of plant and it's often known as red tea. It originated in South Africa and is a great tea because it doesn't have any caffeine. So those were the six different types of tea that you are able to find. Today, you learned lots of useful vocabulary to talk about tea in English. And now it's time for question of the day. Today's question is, what is your favorite kind of tea? What's your favorite kind of tea? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please subscribe to Jen's Jugyo and give this video a thumbs up. Nina, thank you.